In this video, we will be covering custom items. Custom items will act as native Pavlov items, allowing you to receive input, place them in your inventory, and hold them in your hand. Let's get started. To create a custom item, we will right click in the content browser, go to Blueprint Class, and then we will type in Pavlov Custom Item into the filter. Once you select the custom item, you will need to name it. And then we will go ahead and open it up. It's important to note that your custom items need to be inside your UGC folder or whatever folder is generated by your mod kit. It may be different if it's Pavlov Shack that you're building a mod for. But we will go back to the custom item. And at the top, we will select the class defaults, which will show all of our defaults on the right hand panel. We will drop down Pavlov API, then custom item. And here you will see we have some uh, basic variables exposed to configure the custom item. We mainly have our offsets for our hand, which we will go over in a little bit. We have our holding animation, which you have a couple different ones to choose from. We will also go over this in a little bit. We have our inventory offset, which will be the offset the item sits at for the inventory. And this is relative. We have never destroy for an activity. This means that the item won't be destroyed if it's sitting in the world. If there is a uh, self-destroy delay timer set, which it's a very good practice to set one, it'll destroy the item after this time duration is passed once the item is inactive. There's also an inventory disabled. This would disable the item from going into the player's inventory. And then there's exclude slots. This would exclude the slots for the player's inventory, so the item cannot be placed into those slots. Next, let's go over how to configure your custom item. We'll start out by adding a static mesh. You can use a skeletal mesh if you'd like instead. Either or would work. And what we want to do there is drag it over our root and set it as our root. Now we'll grab the flashlight mesh. And this is what we will use for our item. If you go over to your event graph by clicking the tab at the top, you'll see that it's fairly blank once again. There's not much going on. But what you will do is you'll override the functions to see them. We have unused. This is called when the trigger is released. On use is called when the trigger is pressed. We have on pickup, on drop, and can pick up item. Can pick up item will run when you're trying to pick up the item, and if it's true, it'll allow you to pick up the item. If it's false, it will not allow you to pick up the item. Let's take a look at the static mesh and look at the properties for it. We would like to have generate overlap events set to true. We would also like to set the collision presets here to custom. We will set the object type to be grabbable. We'll click ignore in this top box, which will set it to ignore all types. Then we will click block for world static and overlap for world dynamic. Those are the important collision settings that you should set for your item. From here, we can show how to configure the item in the hand very quickly. So if we go to our plugin, examples, items, you'll see we have a hand poses folder. In this folder, you'll be able to see all of the different hand poses. And we also have a tool, the hand pose tester, we will drag that out and when you drag it into the level you will see on the right hand side you have an option for the holding animation whether it's the right or left hand the pick offset and then the pick rotation offset the pick offset correlates to our class defaults in our custom item to this pick offset and same with the pick rotation offset so what we can do with this tool is we could use it to plug in our items mesh. If we click over here on item, we could select the mesh. We'll go ahead and click the root up at the top or the actor itself. And then once we've plugged in some values, we could hit set up hand to test it. 
This will give us a good example of what our hand will look like. So we could go ahead and zero these values out. This is what it would look like by default. If we kept these default values for the hand, what we would want to do is play around with the rotation value to get it facing forward. And note that this is facing a little bit further from the root. We can see the root right here where the pivot is located. We would like to get it a little bit further back. So we'll go ahead and subtract seven. And that's looking a bit better. So what we could do is right click on the pick offset and copy. We could go to our custom item. We can go to our class defaults, our pick offset here, right click it, and we could paste the value in. Now we could also do this with our pick rotation offset. And we could paste the value in. Now we need to select our grip as well. We are using the pill grip for this. And our item will be configured and it should display the same way in the hand. Now we can see what it would look like in the left hand by unticking the box, hitting set up item. Now it's important to note that the material just kind of bugs out here. That's why things look a little weird, but we can refresh this by just taking the box again and that'll refresh the actor. No, we're not running the setup, we're just changing a variable over here. Now that you know how to configure custom items, let's take a quick look at a use case example. Here we have Bob. Bob's on Team Zero. We also have a flag. It's the same team as Bob's on. It's a blue flag belonging to Team Zero. Bob cannot pick up his own flag because for CTF, it wouldn't make sense for Bob to be able to pick up his own flag. So, when Bob tries to grab the flag, we ask, is Bob on a different team? If Bob's not on a different team, he cannot pick up the flag. If he is, he could pick up the flag. Let's take a look at that in practice. So, if we were to override the can pick up item function, let's go ahead and open it up. We will see the pawn coming in. This is basically Bob. We will get Bob's status. We will see, is Bob's team ID not equal to the flag's team ID? If that's true, then Bob can pick up the flag. If it's false, Bob cannot pick up the flag. If we can't get Bob's status, he can also not pick up the flag, because at that point we're unsure what team Bob is on. Now let's move on to a replication example. We could see this in the plugins, example, items, flashlight, mod item, flashlight. Now, to better visualize this, we're going to bring back Bob. This time around, Bob has a flashlight, and it's currently off. He wants to turn it on and show Andy and Joe. If Bob were to press trigger, and we were to configure the flashlight to turn on when he presses trigger, only Bob would see the flashlight turn on. Andy and Joe wouldn't see it change. That's because it's not replicated to them. The server would have to tell Andy Joe and Bob that the flashlight states changed. You could technically do a bit of prediction where Bob will know ahead of time that his flashlight's changed, but that's outside the scope of this example. So let's go ahead and show you what would happen when Bob presses trigger. So Bob is going to press trigger. We are going to ask, is Bob the authority? Meaning, is Bob on the server? If Bob says, or if that's no, then Bob will say that he wants to trigger the flashlight on the server. So we will come back around and this time we will be on the server because we've sent a call up to the server that says we want to trigger the fl flashlight on or off, basically toggle it. So then we will go over to the yes section and we will ask on the server, is the flashlight on? If it is on, we want to turn it off. If it's off, we want to turn it on. This is just visualized with the simple boolean. Is it true or is it false for if the flashlight is on? So that's what we will store it as. We will store the value as a, a boolean and we will replicate it. And when we set this, we will replicate this value down to the clients. I know this sounds a little complex, but trust me, it's pretty simple when it comes down to it. It's just important to note how the flow goes and where certain logic needs to run in order for it to get down to all clients.
So once we've set the flashlight state, it's going to tell all of the clients that the flashlight state has changed. On the clients, we're going to ask, is the flashlight state true? If it's true, then we need to set the light visible. If it's false, then we need to set it hidden. So over here, we have our little happy picture with Bob with his flashlight on showing Andy and Joe. So let's go ahead and show you how this is done. So we have event on use, which once again, we've overridden that. When we do that, we will add a do once here. This is not necessary, but it will prevent the player from triggering the flashlight more than once a half second. Um, this is just a way to gate off things such as a cooldown, more or less. So we will say do this once. We will get the owning pawn, which should be Bob. If we can get Bob, then we will say switch flashlight. Now, if you note, there's a little bit of text here that's in gray, and that calls to, if we were to double click on it, the switch flashlight function. You notice it says execute on the server. So if we were to come back over here, this would be the equivalent of this. Bob will press the flashlight. We're not necessarily asking if we're the authority here. We're just always going to call this Bob wants to trigger the flashlight. Uh, it'll be more simplistic that way because we'll most likely expect this to be on the client unless it's single player otherwise. So the way we get this to run on the server is if we were to create a custom event, we can name this flashlight changed. We will set this over here in the replication tab to run on server. And when you do that, you can see you get the executes on server and that will send the call up to the server. Now, once we get to the server, we will get the owning pawn once again, just to make sure Bob or someone owns this flashlight. And then we will take whatever our flashlight state is, and then we will invert it and we will set it. Now, if you notice this says set with notify, and this is also our Boolean variable, which can be visualized here. So we said, is our flashlight on? We're not necessarily asking if it's on in this condition. We're just doing the opposite because we know if it's on, we want it to be off, or if it's off, we want it to be on. But then the more important part is, is here's our flashlight state that we need to send down to our clients. That would be our light on. Now this is created by clicking the plus symbol next to variable, and then you could create your name for your variable. Now after you create your variable, if you click on it, you will see over here in the right details panel, you have a replication section. None will not replicate the variable. This would be the equivalent of our first scenario where only Bob could see the flashlight. We want to show the flashlight to Andy and Joe, so we are going to click the rep notify. This will notify everyone when the replication state has changed. Additionally, there is replicated, which will just always replicate the information, but won't notify them. We would like to notify because when we change if it's on or off, we need to visually change if it's on or off. So we would use a rep notify. Note I already have these, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the ones it creates, but it would create a function for you with the exact same name on rep underscore and then your variable name afterwards. So we will double click on that. And this gets called anytime that this value changes for this variable. So when we set our flashlight state here, this on rep function will run. So now we'll go back over to our example. We've set our state. And now we need to tell everyone that the flashlight state has changed, which is what we've done here. So now we need to say, is our flashlight state true? We want to set the light visible. If it's false, we want to set it hidden. And that's exactly what we have here. We've placed a spotlight on our flashlight. And then we just go ahead and change whether it is hidden or not hidden based on if the light is on. Now that we have a general overview of how to make custom items, set up their offset in their hand, gate them off from being picked up by certain players, as well as create interactions, let's take a look at how we get them into our mod. 
So if we remember, inside of our global info example, we have a custom item table. We can create this by right-clicking, going to our miscellaneous data table. In the drop-down, we want to select custom item data. We will click OK, and we will name this custom item table. You can name this however you'd like. Just remember the name because we need to go to our global info and we need to set that custom item table. And we will compile and save our global info. Now, if you remember, inside of our game logic as well in the very first video, we have our global info class set there. So we have our game logic linking to our global info. We have our global info containing our custom item table. So we'll go back into our custom item table. And this is basically a Excel spreadsheet, more or less. That's how you can look at it. So if we click the plus symbol to add a new row, we're going to name this row whatever we want our item to be. So we are going to name it flashlight. And then you will see here you have a custom item class that you could select. And we will go ahead and select our flashlight. Now you could do this for all of your items. So you could go ahead and add as many rows as you would need. It's just important that you use unique names for your row names. And just make sure that you make them something easy to remember because this is the same name that you'll use to look up the item as well as to spawn the item. So we can remove rows by clicking this X symbol here. And we will save this. And now in terms of spawning this item, so we want to give every player that spawns in a flashlight, we could go to our game logic. We will go to our spawn function. We will double click it to open it. And in here you can see we have our spawn item function. All we need to do here is pass in that ID, flashlight, and you can choose the properties for if it should spawn in the dominant hand or in the inventory, as well as what inventory slot it should spawn into. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at the player proxy, as well as talking about how to add skins to the player skin table.